I remember that um, I could see Pennsylvania Avenue and the motorcade was going down Pennsylvania having uh, picked up Kennedy. On, I guess they're on the way to the they're on the way to, to Dallas, mm -hmm. where they flew, and um, suddenly, where I was, I couldn't hear the shots. I heard them. I had a television monitor on, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that's where I heard them. I couldn't hear them. That was up in the studio. I see. And we had then a young man named um, um, Robert McNeil. Name was Robin. He changed it who was riding in the back seat of the car behind, second car behind Kennedy's. There was a Kennedy's car, Secret Service, NBC's car with McNeil in it. He heard the shots, didn't know what was going on, but he knew there was not, wasn't supposed to be any shooting around there. Jumped out of the car, was young and agile and wind and limb, ran to, there are very few telephones in Dealey Plaza. He ran to the nearest phone and lucky enough to grab it first before anybody else could get it. He called NBC in New York. Somebody at NBC in the newsroom said, hold on, they said, this is McNeil in Dallas. Very excited. He, and somebody in New York said, hold on, put the phone down and never came back. We tracked him down the next morning and fired him. Mm -hmm. And I can't imagine the horror of being in that position, the biggest news story of your life, and some fool hangs up on you when there are no other phones available. Merriman Smith, by the way, the United Press, was in um, a Secret Service car. He was a White House regular, and they all knew him. And the Secret Service had its own telephone in the car. And so he got the news out before we did. It was just a matter of a few seconds, but still. We care about that. I think we reassured a population that might have, might have been worried, afraid, might have turned to some kind of violence, might have thought the country was coming apart, our president has been killed out in the street. I mean, it's such a horrible event. It's only happened once before, and that was in a railroad station, and that was McKinley. And he was killed in the Washington, not in public. And uh, Reagan was shot, but not killed. And he recovered quickly. So it was a, a once in a lifetime, please God, event. And uh, none of us had ever seen anything like it before. Um, the last shooting, as I say, was McKinley before any of us were born. We didn't know anything about it. The network just took over and stayed for two or three days, day and night, all night. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, we, we thought we were, it, it, was, it was our responsibility to calm the public, to explain to them the president had been shot, yes, perfectly horrible, yes, but the country lives and uh, there's not going to be any uh, crisis. Mm -hmm. And I think, um, I think in that doing that, we performed a real service in which we can take some pride. Nobody got excited, nobody shouted, nobody screamed. Everyone did his job under the most crucial circumstances, and everyone did his job and did it well. I was very proud of all of us.